welcome to Bass with Gav. I came across on Bax Music for £233, the Fazley Mammoth 7-string bass guitar. Uh, I put, plugged this straight into my audio interface. Let's have a listen. There we go. This that's the basic sound of the instrument. Let's let's have a listen to some of the controls. You've got here a three position switch. I can switch it all the way down, and that's off. That's basically a kill switch. In the middle, both pickups on. And bizarrely, in the top position, as best I can tell, it's like a pickup selector, but only I think for this pickup here. So it's a bit strange. Uh, I'm going to leave it in the middle position, so both pickups on. Uh, the pickup selector also is strange. So, in the front position, I think the back pickup is on because that sounds well, a uh, well bridge pickup to me. And I'll return my bass player card if that's not neck pickup. So, um, yeah, the pickup blender seems to be wired backwards. This might just be my bass, but um, you also have three part active EQ, so I can jack jack up the bass. And already I like the sound of the instrument a lot more. I can jack up the mid, so I'm turning the bass back down. And then let's, let's boost, boost the treble. So between those, you've got a reasonable amount of tone shaping. You can cut and boost. So I like a, I like a lot of bass. I am a bass player. Um, and I'm not really a fan of bridge pickups. I just think they sound too pro bass player-y, muso, muso. Um, okay, so that's broadly the sound of the instrument. Of course, we have a volume control. Right, now I'm going to review it. So <laughs> this instrument is, is fine to play. It's, it's okay um, for such a big instrument. It's quite easy to get round. It's actually pretty playable, but... This might just be my bass, but look at the fret markers. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but this fret marker here sits on the fret, not in the middle like it does on most basses. But here, on the fifth fret, you can see very faintly, maybe, that there was one in the, in the correct or in the normal place, and then they've moved it up. Very strange. So the fret markers are out, um, but there's no real sharpness here of the frets. They're not hanging over the edge or anything. So actually, in terms of playability, I'm quite happy with this for a seven string bass. The most I've played before is six, and I can get around this really quite okay. And uh, I get all my like. You get all those nice little kind of jazzy chords at the top. Sounds really nice, actually. But onto the sound, um, it's weak. It's I've got my audio interface turned up really high, and there's this noise that comes in and out on a kind of cycle I can't work out what that is I haven't taken this thing apart and had a look at the wiring but I think there is an electrical fault on the back you'll notice there are two 9 volt jack 9 volt sockets I can take either one of them out unplug it bass still works now take my take my word for it because I'm not going to fanny about on camera for too long but uh, if I change take the other one out it doesn't work, obviously, if I have no batteries. But either battery in, either or, it seems to work fine. So maybe the circuit only needs 9 volts. And I've tried the EQ all the way up, and it doesn't seem to affect the EQ's range or power or anything like that. But the overall output of this bass is very weak. So for an 18-volt preamp, I would be expecting a monster tone. I'm having to run my audio interface way higher than I would with any of my passive instruments, which is bizarre, except for the Gear for Music. But I'm going to re review that another time. The Gear for Music six-string, oh my days. <laughs> my Fender, quite high output, even though it's passive. So this thing, what I've been doing is, I, and this is n is naughty, is just boosting the EQ, just to get enough level to 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 you know reasonably hear myself. So that's a major downside. I mean, I guess if you've got a preamp, you might be all right, and maybe you can sort the wiring out. But I'm reluctant to use this in church or to gig it or record with it because of that. It, but it's tremendous fun to play. So if you're like me and you're a middle-aged man with some money, then hey, I, I strongly recommend this. Other other gotchas. Let's have a look at this headstock. Uh, see if I'm getting shot. Uh, just then, my machine locked. I always forget to run caffeinate. 
I'm recording. I should be able to tell the Mac. I'll edit this bit out. Okay, so let's have a look at the headstock. Get the camera out of the way. Notice this. I can detune that. So these these are now touching. I can't turn it through. So the the actual position of the machine heads is wrong. You know, I don't know about these these three. I haven't tried with these three, but yeah, these top strings I can actually make them clash. So it's possible to get it into an untunable state, which which sucks. Just let me work that back into tune. Uh, the machine heads are really bad. They're, they're a bit slippy. Um, they don't seem to hold their... They hold their tune okay, but they have that thing where it's not like a smooth transition. It's 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 you turn it a bit, it tunes a little bit, turn it a bit more, and it's suddenly... So it's, it's not very linear. They're not very high-quality machine heads, but 233 quid and there's seven of them. I'm not really complaining. I'm just making you aware if you are looking to purchase a seven-string bass what the limitations are. Bridge is pretty cool. All individual string side deals. Notice the B, E, and A. By the way, for if you haven't played a seven string, there's one below and two above what you get in a four. So you've got a C and an F on top. Fourth's all the way up, fifth's all the way down, and a B at the bottom. So B, E, and A are strung sort of to there, uh, to the bridge. And um, the other strings, B, E, A, D, G, C, and F, are all strung through body. So it goes right the way through, and you can actually see the ball. I'm, I'm not going to hold this up any longer, it's heavy. Um, you can actually see the ball ends through the through the body, so you get like sustain is reasonable. So yeah, pretty happy with with the actual layout of the instrument. I'm happy with the playability. Frets are okay. Intonation's not too bad. Um, action was reasonable out of the box. I'm not a tech. Like I can I can sort sort out minor issues, but I'm not much of a tech, so I'm not going to be playing with any truss rods or anything. I need grown-ups to help me with that. But yeah, the major problem is that low output, a little bit noisy, uh, maybe there's some poor shielding there. So maybe if I take this apart and have a stab at it with my soldering iron, meter it, get it on my get it on my oscilloscope, see what's going on, I can figure out what's up. But yeah, that weirdness, that's, a, that's like uh, a code smell to me, or a hardware smell, the fact that the two batteries, I can take either one out with, with, with no real effect. Um, Tonally wise, uh, let's go full bridge pickup. I'll do a little bit more, a little bit more playing. Obviously, it's a huge instrument, so. Over to neck pickup. suddenly gone very nervous about my playing because I'm not that familiar with the seventh string. Um, let's give it give it a bit of EQ. So I'm going to take the bass down, uh, mid and treble up. that day so yeah there's just a few a few like ideas i've been playing around since i've had the seven but i'm quite enjoying playing it it's it's um i sit outside when the kids are in the bath i, I sit just outside the bathroom with my little little battery amp and i play and i've got so much range i can play chords but i could also play so yeah there's a there's a lot of sonic possibility with the instrument um, so in terms of the balance, yeah, it's a bit of a neck diver, but to be honest, it's really not that bad. I don't feel like I'm fighting it up all the time, you know, like some, some Les Paul's got really heavy headstock. I mean, obviously they sound amazing as well to compensate, but yeah, the, uh, the it's, it's, I'm not wrestling it. Oh, come on 
of that gear for music is the way I'm wrestling that. But it sits really comfortably. It's got a nice long bottom horn. So it rests nicely on your leg. The body shape's quite good. It's cheap watered, you know. There's there's nothing like fancy here. Um, looking on the back of the neck though, it's so satisfying seeing the, the physical size of this thing. People people are impressed when they see it, sheer the physical size of it. But yeah, the things that I say strongly against it is these tuning pegs clashing. I guess you could probably sort that out by drilling a hole down here and moving, moving them down, spreading them out, uh, filling the wood in. It's, a little bit beyond my capabilities really I'm not very handy um, the other thing against it is is that noise which I'm not sure if, if you've picked up on on the recording um, I'm not gonna sit here in silence there it is very 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 quiet uh, probably get away with it in a live setting if it was like a rock gig or something but something quiet nah um, so that's against it the um, actual neck very nice I can get around it fine it doesn't have much in the way of a finish on it but it doesn't need it none of these frets are hanging over like I haven't cut myself on these or anything it, the finish is reasonably nice these fret markers being in the weird position uh, I've never seen that in my life before but the fact that like it looks like someone did it right and then came back and did it wrong is bizarre it just it says it's made in a factory by non-musicians so I would suspect the instrument quality is therefore variable um, the EQ is nice the EQ works like get a nice like I can get a nice like bassy tone then I can bring some treble and get some like get some aggression out of it so I like the sound of the instrument actually it's not that bad considering it's cheap pickups and everything but the fact that it's an 18 volt preamp and I, and, I, and it's that quiet maybe there's something individually wrong with this instrument or maybe it's the the line so here ended the review, 230 quid. Yeah, if you've got money to spare and you really want to try a, an extended range instrument, this is probably as good as you're going to get. I know Harley Benton used to do one. That's what I initially tried to buy uh, secondhand, but the seller on Reverb had already sold it. And there are like other manufacturers that do one, but this super cheap and it arrived like two days later after I ordered it. And it's been super fun to play, but I ain't going to gig it, I don't think play them out there we go it's quite a good fun <laughs>